Greetings, dear ones. I am Kryon of Magnetic Service. Once again, we are outside, still in the city of Luxor. I wish to continue the discussion on consciousness. And I want to do it in a way that you understand how important this is to this planet right now. What has happened in history and why this particular shift is so amazing. More than you know, more than you can conceive of what is starting to move on this planet in the way it is. Let us review for just a moment. The search for God is intuitive. The idea of an afterlife is intuitive. And civilization after civilization has spent its time doing these things in the best way they can. But consciousness is choice. And it is not intuitive. We made the example of the child. Let us continue it. A child who often would lose its parents early, in certain societies thrown in with other children, would then be part of the pack without instructions, would have no accelerated consciousness, no ethics, no compassion. And you have seen this over and over. These things which we call consciousness and the vibration of consciousness is choice. Some have asked this. Is it something that is wrong with Egypt that it never raised its consciousness? And I tell you this, dear ones, no one did. In fact, the consciousness of Egypt at the beginning, 5,000 years ago, was higher than the planet was in the 20th century. Consciousness floats by choice with that which is free choice of humanity. And you can see where it went. Civilization after civilization, it became lower and lower. You got to see the various civilizations and cultures in their attempt perhaps to even raise it they were not successful at all. Many tried. And then they were the bright spots that we talk about on the planet that we still quote from, whether it's in the Southern Hemisphere or the Northern Hemisphere, there were a few in groups. And even some of those were wiped out because of high thinking. You might ask, why is this the case? Let me give you an example. If you offered humanity riches and power as opposed to wisdom and light, right now, what do you think you'd get? <laughs> and you would call that human nature that they would go to that which is a lower consciousness. Did other civilizations before this one that we have spoken of, did they also have this struggle? Dear ones, not only did they have the struggle, they destroyed themselves four times. You are the fifth civilization in the last 26,000 years to have a go at it, as we say. And these things will slowly be revealed. 
We said this before, that the civilization before this one, number four, will start to be revealed to you as technology allows you to discover under the ground the things that right now are unknown. Language was that never existed, history that you don't know about, time before time. It's there. It's even starting now to be revealed. And it will put historians aback. They won't know what to make of these things. But they did indeed destroy themselves through low consciousness. Is this difficult for you to understand? For take a look at number five, which is you. I say again, what was the prophecy of the planet when you were born? And the prophecy said, the end is coming. If you take a look at your own history, you warred and you warred and you warred some more. You warred so much that it got worse and worse. Philosophers have always spoken of a dysfunctional society who keeps trying the same thing and gets no results and tries it again. And that's war. Killing begats killing. A word that means killing then makes more killing. It doesn't get you anywhere. It wasn't that long ago that it got so bad you headed into genocide. And then weapons of mass destruction. You were on the same identical track as four civilizations before you in their own way. This, dear ones, is the choice. And then something happened. And that's what we want to talk about yet again. I am here to present something to you. I am here because of the shift. And I have to explain this carefully and lovingly to an audience that perhaps has heard this before but still may not grasp the beauty and the compassion of what is taking place. We have said these things before. A fool does not know he is a fool because a fool cannot think of things except foolish things. A fool has no concept of what he appears to be to others. There's a ceiling on the fool's ability to see himself. Many times we've used the phrase, you don't know what you don't know. And what this means is this, as high as you think you can conceive things, there is a ceiling on your abilities. And I've used the metaphor many times. You cannot explain color to a sightless person. It is impossible. They don't even have the beginnings of the perception of light. So therefore, for you to get elegant and explain color, is impossible. I've used the metaphor of being in the black and white world and somebody with color comes along and says, look what I have for you. And the whole world looks at them and says, we're not interested because they cannot see it. Only the one who sees in color understands the difference. Now, why am I telling you this? because this is starting to change. There is an elegance starting to show itself even in the last 50 years that you cannot see because time is going slow. You are in a society that wants quick change 
a media that reports by the minute, and yet there is a slow wheel of change taking place. Fifty years ago, if there were leaders that were not compassionate, you would not blink an eye. You would say to yourself, well, that's just the way it is. And societies prove that, for they don't seem to care or object. Not that long ago. Today, if you see an unelegant leader or one without compassion, suddenly you care. In fact, it shows itself so clearly. And that, my friends, dear ones, is growth in human nature. You're getting to a higher level of expectation. You're starting to see and recognize what used to be normal and objecting to it. What have you done in the last five years that becomes a puzzle? What is the, the issue of the day? And it is the refugee. Now, go back 20 years ago. I've told you this before that babies who wash up on a beach or boats who sink with 14 or 15 people in a family was happening all over the world. And it never made the news, but it did lately. And the world reacted. What is the difference? What is the difference? And I say to you that you're starting to have a compassionate consciousness worldwide in certain areas and you're starting to see the differences between what was and what is these things will change everything it'll change business banking and many institutions today which we said cannot survive with a lack of integrity in the countries that you live in that's going to be shown soon with certain institutions falling simply by doing what they always did before. And you never, ever cared. And suddenly you will. This is consciousness shift. This planet has tried many times to lift itself up, but there were not enough. It wasn't strong. Light is something that happens because you see it and you move toward it. Darkness is the absence of light. Dear ones, this should tell you something. Light is starting to increase and be seen on the planet. There's many things I could point to and have in the past that start to shift and change, especially since 2012, the precession of the equinoxes. So I bring this to you right now personally. Everything I have said is personal. I'm going to ask you, what don't you know? Is it possible that there are things beyond what you believe is appropriate for you? You may sit there and say, this is not for me. I don't believe this. Or a portion is right and a portion is not. And I tell you, you are reacting to a bias that you only know what you've experienced in the past or what you've been told. And you're not ready to soar above it. How many of you realize at this moment you are on the cusp of the edge of a consciousness shift where you can control your own healing in your body completely? A consciousness shift that starts to tune in to your Akash. You can actually feel where you've been, what you've done, and pull upon it for the things like health, long life, many things. That is beyond science. It is metaphysics. That is what you are experiencing all over the planet. It's starting to explode, and I want to show you. I want to show you in a way that you will understand. I want you to look at the future. Now, you'll say, well, Cryon, I cannot do that like you can. 
you can look at the potentials. What can you imagine? What can you imagine for you? What do you think is impossible for you right now? Now I want you to imagine it to be possible and being solved. And don't worry about the details. I'm telling you that there is physics on your side. There are guides and spirits on your side. This planet is starting to come alive with help. The light is something you cannot stop. And what the light is going to do is expose dark things. And when those are starting to be exposed, those in the light will stamp them out. And they will say they're inappropriate. And it will be the first time that this planet has soared beyond what you call human nature. And the result will be you'll never war again. That is dysfunctional. How many thousands of years have you tried that without results? It never works and never will. And this will occur. Human nature is starting to evolve into something very, very slowly that is different from what it was. Dear ones, I've said it before. Your children will be some of the first to awaken to this new energy and feel it. You sit in Egypt, the crux of history, a 5,000 year old civilization where three of that was in one culture. You're on the Nile at this moment, listening to a channel about something that's going to happen on this earth that's going to change all history forever. This is the message, old soul. Are you thinking in black and white? Do you deny this can happen? Are you closed to the possibility that what I am saying may actually be the truth beyond the truth? Finally, I say this. Spirit, God, light, creative source, knows your name. And the higher consciousness you have regarding that, the closer you will become to the compassionate love of God. You can walk hand in hand with the God inside, the higher self. You can leave this place and you can be different than you came in. There is no greater place to show you the dichotomy of where you sit in the land you sit and what's going to happen soon. You are the front line of all these things. I want you to pray that you will see the color that is coming and for yourselves that you would release that, release that which keeps you from seeing all of it. Some will say, Cryon, I love what you're saying, but how do I do it? What is the process? And I will tell you it is so simple. All you have to do is give your body permission to get out of the old into the new and stop drawing the curtains closed when you hear something that is different or new or that would change who you are. That is the key. One of the most difficult things to do for all humans. Absorb what you're hearing and where you are. Think of the history that is here and recognize it as the old earth because you are moving into a brand new planet. Things are starting to change completely around you, dear ones, for the first time in human history. Number five, has survived. And now you move forward like some of the other planets have that we have discussed with you on a track that has been done before but never here. Think of these things even as you tour those which are the tombs and temples to come on this trip looking at what was a consciousness that never could climb out of war 
killing themselves or all of the drama that was. Until now, it is changing. It's a good time to be alive. And dear ones, it is not an accident that you're here hearing these words. Again, I say the metaphor. May you always drink from the Nile, the mother, the one that flows north toward heaven, the compassion of God. Drink from this every day of your life and you will be changed. That's why you're here. And so it is.